Hello, my name is Ram and welcome to another video of Mato Plasan. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the fast way or the faster way to build a frequency distribution table using the data analysis function in Microsoft Excel. And if you don't have this function yet, you can check my video tutorial in the description below. In the example, Ryle, a market analyst, decided to record the fuel consumption of 50 selected sports utility vehicles in a large city. The data collected are shown below and are expressed in kilometers per liter. Now, we need to construct a frequency distribution for the data. And for this data set, we will follow the steps in the construction of the frequency distribution using the data analysis function. To begin, we need to identify the highest possible value in the data set. So for us to do that, we need to use the maximum value function. So you just need to type equal sign max open parenthesis, then select the range of the data set. By closing the formula, we have 19 as our highest value. Now for the lowest value, we need to use the minimum value function in Excel. So equal sign minimum open parenthesis, then selecting this data set again. That will give us a value of 7. These two values will be used for the range because range is equal to highest value minus the lowest value. So the answer using that formula is 12. And now, for us to identify the class width, we need to decide on the number of classes because the class width can be found by dividing the range with the number of classes. So, since I already prepared a table here containing 5 rows, we'll be constructing a frequency table using 5 classes. So, the formula is range, which is in this case 12, divided by 5 and will give us the answer 2.4. But it says here that the value of the class width should always be round up to the nearest whole number. So meaning 2.4 is not enough. Therefore, I need to use the round up formula for me to get the rounded value. So by using equal sign, round up, open parenthesis, and the value that we need, and I just need to repeat, repeat rather the formula 12 divided by 5 and selecting or typing 0 here because we need to round up the value in the nearest whole number. So if it's one decimal place, you just write here or type here 1. If it's two decimal places, you, you type 2. But if it's just whole number, you just type 0. And we'll have the rounded value which is 3. Now, if you forgot this formula, it's okay. You just need to add 1 to the whole number in our previous answer. Since the previous answer is 2.4, so the rounded value is 3. You need to round it up. So the next integer after 2.4 is 3. So if it's 2.32, it's still 3. It's, if it's 2.87, it's still 3. So in this case, the class width is 3. The class width is very important here because if you want to identify the class limits or class intervals, we need the class width. And to start the interval with the first row here, we need to use the lowest value in the data set, which is 7. So we start completing the lower class limits first. So if this is 7, I need to add 3 because the class width is 3. I'm going to get 10. 10 adding 3 again is 13. But if you want a faster way, all you need to do is to create a formula using equal sign, selecting the previous number and adding 3. Enter, we have 10. And by dragging this cell, we have now the following lower class limits. And for us to identify the upper class limits, which we need later, we just need to subtract the next lower class limit to 1. So 10 minus 1 is 9. And here, 13 minus 1 is 12. And so on. You notice that the faster way to do it or to identify the upper class limit is using the class width again. So because 9 plus 3 is 12, so therefore I just need to add 3 on 12 for me to get 15. 
and so on. But if you need the formula, you just need to create equal sign, selecting the previous upper class limit, plus the class width, which is 3. Then, by dragging this cell, we'll have the complete set of our class limits. Now, we're done with the difficult part because we need this upper class limits before using the data analysis because it will require us to select a bin. And for us to get the frequency column now, all we need to do is to use the data analysis column or function in Microsoft Excel. So the data analysis is located at the data ribbon. So by selecting this data analysis and then looking for histogram, selecting this, OK, and we have this blank cells. For the input range, we just need to select this data set, any data set. For the bin range, you just need to identify the upper class limit on your class limits. In this case, it's 9 to 21. If you included the labels, you just need to select this. But in my case, I did not include any label, so I'm going to remove this. For the output options, we have the output range, the new worksheet, and new workbook. So what if I decided to select output range? So therefore, I need to set a range here in this sheet so that I could show the result. So the ranges now are complete. So therefore, I just need to hit OK. And we have now the output. So the 9 here represents the frequency or the number of tallies for the numbers 9 and below, while 17 here represents the tallies from 10 to 12. So it's 10 to 12. For you to understand it clearly, this is the um, interval 7 to 9, and this is for the interval 10 to 12. So all we need to do now is to put these values here to complete our frequency distribution. So this is frequency. And I can use the copy function, equal sign. So you can select this, enter. And by dragging this cell, you have now the values. Or as easy as copy paste. Yeah, I know. That's easier. Okay. As easy as that. So you can always use this uh, function if you want to count the values in the given data set on a given interval. So this is very helpful, especially when your data set has thousands of values in it. Now, what if you want to include the cumulative percentage? It's easy. So you need to go to a data analysis again, histogram, and since I'm just using the same bean and range, I'll just select this cumulative percentage. Oh, oops, I already selected it a while ago. So how about you just select cumulative percentage? If you want to sort the, the data for your Pareto chart, you can also use this or select this one. Now, I want uh, a new worksheet for this one, so I'm going to select new worksheet, apply, and hit OK. So here, in the given data set, we can see the cumulative percentage for these values. And for your Pareto chart, we have the other um, columns for the bean frequency and cumulative percentage. And if you really don't have this uh, data analysis function in Microsoft Excel, as I mentioned, you can always check my video tutorial. Or in case you really don't have that add-in function in your Microsoft package, then you can watch my other video explaining other functions or formulas in Excel that you could use to create a complete set of frequency distribution. And that's all for this video. If you want more data analysis in Microsoft Excel, make sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.